Hey, very warm welcome to each and every one. This is our devotional Bible study called Reflections. We're presently in the book of James, chapter 2. If you have a Bible and would like to follow along, we'll be in verse 14 to the end of the chapter. We're uh, James all about living a, a Christian life that's balanced. So uh, today we're going to begin with that great hymn, Because He Lives. God sent His Son, they called Him Jesus, He came to love, heal and forgive, He lived and died, to buy my pardon, an empty grave is there to prove my Savior made. Because he lives How sweet to hold A newborn baby And feel the pride And joy he gives But greater still That calm assurance This child can face uncertain days because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, all fear is gone, because I know he holds a future, and life is worth the living just because he Words that are very true. Life is worth the living just because he, Jesus, lives. We're in James chapter 2. And we begin with verse, verse 14. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to him, Oh, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish man. Do you want evidence faith without deeds is useless? Was not our ancestor Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God. It was credited to him as righteousness. He was called God's friend. You see, a person is justified by what he does and not by faith alone. The same way was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous 
for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off on a different direction. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. There was a woman who came to her pastor for months. My husband's going to harm me for attending services. The pastor said, have faith. The Lord will watch over you. She said, oh, yes, he's kept me safe thus far only. Now he says, if I keep coming to your church, he's going to harm you. The pastor said, well, now perhaps it's time to check out that little church on the other side of town. Not always easy living by faith, is it? Faith and action go hand in hand. James reminds us, he said, you see, a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. And this is one of the most misunderstood passages in the Bible and even in the book of James. Uh, Because you say, well, chaplain, didn't Paul say it's by grace we've been saved through faith, not works? So what is it, faith or works? I'm so glad you asked that question. Yes, Paul wrote, it is faith alone that justifies. But James says, faith which justifies is never alone. You see, James was battling laziness in the body of Christ. This church said, well, it doesn't matter what you do as long as you believe. And Paul was battling legalism. Oh, you've got to keep all the Jewish laws and regulations to be a Christian. You see, James focuses on the fruit of salvation, the fruit of the Spirit, what you see externally, while Paul focuses on the root of salvation, what happens inside. James is talking about how to show you're a Christian. Paul is talking about how to know you're a Christian. So Paul and James do not contradict one another. They complement one another. They're both right. They're talking about different things. Saving faith will produce action. It's by grace we've been saved through faith to do good works. So if you get those out of order, we're in trouble. There was a Sunday school teacher who rode students to the middle of a lake to teach them a lesson on faith. On one oar, he painted the word faith, On the other, the word works. When they were in the middle, he stopped and began to row with only the or mark faith. They went in circles. Then he reversed the process, process, did the same thing with the or marked works. They circled in the opposite direction. The confused students wanted an answer. The teacher said, neither faith nor works can stand alone. They're twins that cannot be separated. I always like to say it's the opposite side of the same coin. You know, a balanced Christian life recognizes that faith in Jesus also exercises. It's not stagnant. And that's what he's talking about. Uh, Dynamic faith is more than just an empty confession. Because James said, well, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds, can such faith save them? This is the first of two rhetorical questions. Each anticipates the answer to be negative. Dynamic faith is more than words or right language. James is challenging the believer to act like a believer or faith is inactive, dead, fruitless. Cripple boy was once hurrying to catch a train, carrying gifts under his arm. He was struggling with his crutches. Suddenly a man bumps into him, knocks his parcels in all directions. The man paused and scolded the boy for getting in his way. Another gentleman, seeing the youngster's distress, quickly picked up the scattered gifts. And he slipped a dollar bill into his pocket. I'm sorry, he said. I hope this makes up for your trouble. The child couldn't remember being shown such kindness and said, thank you. Are you Jesus? The man said, no, 
I am but one of his followers. You know, walking into McDonald's does not make a person a hamburger any more than sitting in a, or a church service on Sunday makes him a Christian. Dynamic faith is not inactive. So it, it, it's more than just an empty confession. It's also more than uh, a false compassion. James says, uh, goes on to say, well, with uh, out clothes and daily food, if one of you says, eh, go in peace, keep warm and well-fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. So James is really using an illustration to describe a Christian life indifferent to the needs of others. Uh, without clothing is often translated uh, naked, but used in this context of someone poorly clad. Clothing has become so threadbare and tattered, it's as if they don't have anything on at all. Daily food is the only time this exact expression occurs in the New Testament. It refers to the day's supply of food. Uh, they have nothing to eat that day after church. And so to confess Jesus as Savior in those days was really uh, uh, risk, risky, losing everything, which is why many were poor and destitute. Uh, going in peace was a common way for the believer to say, God bless you. The state of Massachusetts faced a unique, rather agonizing court case. It involved a family of a man who drowned and another man who refused to save him. So the family decided to sue for his crime of apathy. Well, the family of the deceased lost the case. The court ruled the man on the dock had no legal responsibility to try and save the man's life. It was his right to choose whether or not he would involve himself in the dying man's distress. James is saying, when you become a part of God's family, there's family responsibilities. Now, how many are grateful that when we were drowning and dead and trespasses and sins, Jesus didn't say, well, you're on your own, too bad for you. No, he went to the cross and shed his blood, rose victoriously, and yes, he saved us by his amazing grace. That's what puts a smile on our face because Jesus didn't have to. He did it out of his great, amazing love for you and me. No, Charlie Brown and Linus are looking out the window at Snoopy. Snoopy is outside in the cold. The food bowl is empty. He's looking sad and chilled to the bone. Charlie Brown says to Linus, he's cold and hungry. We ought to do something. Well, so they both walk outside together and say to Snoopy, be of good cheer, Snoopy. Be of good cheer. And then they turn and walk away. Where did Charles Schultz get that idea? <laughs> right from James, right from this very passage we just went over. I don't, do you remember a movie called Brian's Song? It's about the late Brian Piccolo of the Chicago Bears. He and Gail Sayers had a great friendship. When Gail got injured, Brian kind of nursed the injury back to health and wouldn't let Gail uh, give up. Of course, Gail Sayers is one of the greatest running backs in football history. Later, we discover that Brian is dying of cancer. And as you go through the movie and see their friendship and just how uh, the connections work, I don't know of anyone who has a dry eye through the movie, but stirred emotions fall short. So dynamic faith is more than a, a feeling of uh, false compassion because if uh, emotions are stirred, it would always cause us to take action, to take the initiative. And it's also more than just a shallow conviction. Well, someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds and I'll show you my faith by my deeds. Show me means bring to light to display. I think James was probably from Missouri 
My dad was born in Jefferson City, Missouri. And we all know our state of Missouri is uh, the show me state. You know, somebody said, faith is like calories. You can't see them, but you can sure see the results. If a person says, well, personal health is a high priority in my life, and then you respond, do you eat right? And they say, oh, no, not at all. Well, do you exercise and get proper rest? Oh, no, no, I don't think so. Well, their actions did not back up their, their words. You know, former President Jimmy Carter said a turning point in his life when someone asked, if you were arrested for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? It's a good thought, isn't it? If we were arrested for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict us? You may have heard the true story of a famous high-wire performer by the name of Blondin. Back in 1860, he strung a cable across Niagara Falls. The cable was 1,000 feet long, 160 feet above the raging waters. He walks to the middle and did a backward somersault. He would take a chair to the middle and sit on it. He could balance on the back of two legs. Uh, for his greatest stunt, he asked the crowd if they thought he could take a man across on his back. The crowd cheered, oh, we believe, we believe. And then he said, who wants to get on my back? Needless to say, no one raised their hand. One day he pushed a wheelbarrow full of dirt on about the 10th time, he pushed a wheelbarrow right in front of a tourist. The tourist said, oh, I believe you could do that all day long. He dumped out the dirt and blonde and said, really? Get in. You know, God says to his people, put your money where your mouth is. You see, dynamic faith is more than just a shallow conviction. You know, saying, well, yeah, I, I believe in God. Uh, James said, oh, you believe there's one God? That's good. But even demons believe that and shudder. And shudder appears only here in the New Testament. It means to bristle. Their hair stands up on their end, kind of like a, a porcupine or a, a, an animal that's been challenged. They, they gur and bristle. Well, the devils understand the majesty and awesome, awesomeness of God and they tremble. Just because a person believes there is a God does not make them godly or a Christian. You see, the word believe here means to trust in, cling to, rely on, commit yourself completely to. See, it's more than head knowledge. It's a heart knowledge. It's a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's why I, I, I never call Christianity a religion. Religion implies works and effort uh, to get somewhere. It's a personal relationship because Jesus did it all for us. Again, doesn't mean we don't respond out of faith for what Jesus has done. But, you know, David didn't say, well, the Lord's a shepherd. The Lord's my shepherd. Jesus is Chris's shepherd. David, the Lord, was David's personal shepherd. You know, every morning and every evening, a faithful Jew prayed Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. So James is saying, you believe in the existence of one true and living God? Hey, that's great. You're off to a great start. But keep in mind... The devil and his demons do as well. You know, we hear a lot in, you know, a higher power, supreme, supreme being. You hear that a lot in our culture. Well, that's as far as some are willing to admit. There are a lot of people who believe that there is a God. And James says, big deal if you believe in God, so do demons. An elderly lady was well known for her faith. Next door, a skeptic made fun of her. Well, hard times set in. She stood on her porch and prayed for God to send her some assistance. 
Oh, Lord, I need food. I need groceries. I'm having a difficult time. Oh, please, Lord, send some groceries. Well, next morning on her porch was a large bag of groceries. She shouted, thank you, Lord. Well, the skeptic atheist neighbor jumped out from behind a bush and said, I bought those groceries, not God. Then the lady said, oh, he not only sent me groceries, he made the devil pay for it. Now that is faith. See, dynamic faith empowers us to say, as your child, I trust you to meet every need in my life. You know, the older we are, the more evidence of God's working in our life is evident. Uh, at 65, soon to be uh, 66 this year, um, I've seen God's amazing grace, uh, evidence. He's still batting a thousand. He is faithful. He'll never leave us or forsake us. And so we have a, a lot, a, a greater amount of testimony the longer we are on this side of heaven. So we see dynamic faith is more than just an empty confession, a false compassion, or a shallow conviction of just, you know, uh, mouthing, yeah, I believe. But it's a dynamic faith is balanced out by works. And so James says, you see, faith and actions were working together. His faith was complete by what he did. James mentions a couple people, Abraham and Rahab. They're exact opposites. Abraham is Jewish. Rahab is Gentile. Abraham's a patriarch, one whom Jesus came from his uh, line. Rahab is a prostitute. You know, dynamic faith will cause Abraham to psych uh, to sacrifice his future. Of course, the Jewish audience would immediately identify with Father Abraham. Isaac was to be the son through which the Lord Jesus would eventually come. And so he was willing to sacrifice his one and only son. And God credit that to him as righteousness, willing to sacrifice everything for, for God. Uh, and dynamic faith will cause Rahab to sa sacrifice her life. Abraham would sacrifice a future, Rahab her life. She jeopardized her life and the life of her family when she hid the spies that came from Jericho. She would marry a, a godly Jewish man named Salmon. Their son Boaz married a Gentile convert, Ruth. Rahab is a great, great grandmother of David. Rahab and Ruth are in the genealogy of Jesus. Imagine, she became a part of the lineage of Jesus. Is not this what Jesus did for us? What amazing love. Uh, yes, our God accepts all by grace through faith. A bus filled with uh, men of the village returned down the mountain from the mine. The road was slick with ice on that dark winter evening. The driver had to navigate very carefully. The road was extremely narrow. To the left, sharp rocks. To the right, a sheer cliff. Suddenly, they saw the figure of a little boy sitting in the middle of the road playing with the toy. Well, the driver only had a split second to make a decision. He swerved. If he would swerve, it endanger the lives on the bus. To continue forward meant the certain death of the boy who was, had no idea the bus was coming down the road. Well, the passengers felt a thud. The bus stopped a few hundred feet beyond the crumpled form of the boy. The driver was the first one off. He ran back and picked up his lifeless son as he wept. How much more the love of Jesus who gave his life for the whole world to be saved. Yes, it's by grace we've been saved through faith, not of works. But we are God's masterpiece, God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which he prepared in advance for us to do. 
And that follows Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. That's why we see faith and works go together, the, are the opposite side of the same coin. Because of God's amazing love in Jesus Christ in our life, we don't have to worship, we don't have to do anything, but we get to. We get to worship, we get to hear his word, we get to make a difference in the lives of others. Oh, take a moment to just say thank you, Lord, for uh, his grace in your life so you may have faith. Let's uh, sing a couple verses of that great hymn we began with, and then we close with the verse of God be with you till we meet again. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Uh, His grace works in us so we can touch the lives of those around us. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to May the amazing grace and peace and love of our great God be multiplied unto you today and all days until we meet again.